All righty, ladies and gentlemen. We told you to be here. The man, the myth, the legend. Hey. Kanye is in the neighborhood. First off, man, Kanye, welcome back to the neighborhood, man. Thank you very much. He's rocking a uh, off the neck T-shirt. I'm pretty sure that's uh, quite expensive, also. Yep. Yeah, you know, man. man. Like, no, nah, I think it's medium price. Really medium though. Medium price. What would medium price be to, to Kanye West? Um, exactly. I don't know, it's like a hundred dollars or something like that. That's more than like Louis' whole outfit. Yeah, that pretty much. Man. That's more. <laughs> yeah. It's more than my outfit. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. You know, yeah, yeah, medium. Basically, yeah. what what's the most you pay for a T-shirt then? If that's medium, hmm. <laughs> I'm sure I paid like a thousand dollars or something for a T or something. Remember really? I watched on I said thousand dollar lime bond T with no logo or something like that. Mm-hmm. Man, that's oh, when I was man. like. Deep into the slavery. Right, I heard that. <laughs> hey man, so so now you don't you don't even give it away though, huh? As far as like, uh, cause you you would you would kind of do brands and say certain things, man. Do you make it more of more in a position where in your head, like, man, I, I can't I can't give these away anymore. As far as these endorsements. Yeah, I, I, it's a problem for me. Like one of my friends is like the head designer of Louis Vuitton. Mm-hmm. Can we turn the um the music off? Cause it's easy for me to just think. Yeah, go ahead. put me in rap mode. Uh oh, go so, ahead now. But if you like, I'm in think mode right now. Yeah, it's it's hard for me because even if um at this point if I had, uh, you Kanye, know, I gotta put a little music on, man. This is killing me too. Right. So we we got to make a compromise. What about here? Okay, cool. We All do right, that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, if I had the opportunity to design for Louis Vuitton now, I wouldn't because the because the prices are just too extreme and I don't want to use my message to have like kids saving up that much you know to be a part of what the ideas are you know that's the problem to me with luxury and and one thing that's good I don't totally agree with everything that H&M is R.I. does but one one thing that's good about it is they were able to break that idea that creativity and these things that you really want have to like cost a million dollars you know saying that's the whole concept of luxury they take all the most talented kids like a lot of them went to St. Martin's out in um, London. That's where Alexander McQueen went, Phoebe Philo and Ricardo Tisci. Phoebe Philo is a designer of Celine. Ricardo Tisci is a designer of Givenchy. And, of course, McQueen is McQueen who uh, passed away. Mm-hmm. And then they get, you know, uh, signed to these major corporations, either, you know, uh, the Karen Group, which is the Gucci Group, or uh, LVMH. And uh, what happens is they have a process where they work on clothes. The same way I work on an album might be like 10 people in the studio, 13 people in the studio, a knitwear designer, shoe designer, fabrics designer, silhouettes, uh, just menswear designer, all that. And then they do these fashion shows twice a year. And um, uh, the the clothes get released and they get sold to Bergdahl or Barney's and something like this, uh, like three, four months later. And uh, the, the prices are really, you know, based on this perception of this idea of luxury that gets sold to you mm-hmm. where you see like a girl laid out on a rock mm-hmm. on the side of a rock and it's like a Gucci ad at the bottom of it or something like that. But when I realized luxury, only real luxury is like time. That's right, the only right, thing that right. you can't get back, you know, like and it's time with your family. And uh, people need to understand like the true art is just like the art of like life itself. You know, like we, like for me, I definitely, I, I think art should just be a, a, a standard communication just like good manners mm-hmm. just to have taste yes, sir. you know what i'm saying to understand framings to understand color palettes to understand silhouettes I, I come from an art background so that's a lot of like what i apply when i first was doing my blog back in the days what i apply when i do my shows and now you know I, i'm at a place where i have like a really high level of communication and i and i, I want to keep creating and um what happens is uh, when I want to do clothing, if I don't have the proper infrastructure, then I don't have the proper paint brushes, just like when I was in school and I couldn't afford paints. When I went to art college, there'll be certain type of paints I just couldn't afford. And even for me, you know, if you go in and you don't know what you're doing, you could end up burning a lot of money with the wrong people. Mm-hmm. I remember my dad, when uh, I was younger, he wanted to get into computers and this guy had gassed him up and said he could do computers. I remember him walking around with his like, uh, with, like what is that green board that sits inside of the computer? Like what a little circuit calls? board? Yeah, like, like a, a circuit. Like a I remember board. him having a circuit board and he's like, yo, we're gonna get into computers. And this guy was gassing him up. And, and, I, and I've been through a lot of that same thing also. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of unfair that me and my level of communication for the past 10 years, like people say, oh, he he's arrogant when he says, it's like, no, I'm like the most influential person 
person in fashion of the past 10 and years. And you know that value, yeah. though. Yeah, and I know that value, but you'll talk to – it's only three major players. Renzo Rosso that owns Margiela and, and, and Diesel. Uh, Francois Pidon that owns the Karen Group, which was the Gucci Group. Of course, they have Gucci. They have um, – um, uh, Balenciaga, they have Stella McCartney, and you got LVMH that has Louis Vuitton, Celine. Um, I think they might have. Yeah, it, it's I, I can run. Each of them have about like ten main brands, right? And the thing for me is like I don't have the look and the feel of the fashion look. The same thing is like when I went to rap, I didn't, I ain't look like a rapper, right? Because right? Right. I had a polo shirt on, or I was a producer or something like that. Now because I'm like, you know. Uh, an aggressive black male American rock star, all that stuff. That's not the look of the fashion, whatever. But I got it in my code. I got it in my jeans. And like, soon as I get the proper infrastructure behind me, it's gonna be a train that nobody can stop. You would think, Kanye, yeah. that that would be like a no-brainer, though. But but you also been in a position where I'm sure things been offered to you, but you gotta, you you know, like, you okay, this isn't that one. It ain't clean water. I say my mama was raised in an era when clean water was only served to the fairer skin. Mm. And in this case, it's not just the fairer skin. It might be like any race but black skin right? for clothing because you don't wear no black designers. I mean, they, they set you up only to do an urban design. Or you know, right. my, my, when Michael Jackson you know, wanted to get his videos played, they said he was urban. Michael yeah, Jackson, yeah, yeah, the yeah. greatest. The great, and the thing is, what I'm saying is like in music, I you know, I talk a lot of... I stuff. talk a lot, yeah, stuff, right? <laughs> Other S word, right? But I never get up here and say, I'm the best musician or the best rapper of all time. You know what I'm saying? That's like, I would say more like Tupac is the best rapper of all time. I'll tell you one thing in clothing, as soon as I get it, I'm going to be Tupac I heard of that. this. Oh I will be Tupac of this. And you know that that's yeah. coming, though, but it's got to yeah. come the right way. It's got to come the right way. And plus, the idea of just creating on so many fronts. The thing, the thing that frustrates me, okay, people can come to this show and see what I do tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's the same person that did Glow in the Dark. It's just as innovative as that was at that time. You know what I'm saying? So my company, Donda, which is named after my mother, is a content experience and product company. And all of these things speak to each other. So I'm, I'm really close. I'm close to setting these things up. I'm close to setting the office up. I, sp I spend, you know, mo the majority of my money on creativity, on hiring creatives. Like I, like Virgil Abloh that made Pyrex has worked for me for like eight years. Don C worked for me like for 10 years. It mm -hmm. did just Don hats. All these people that kind of created a lot of these things culturally that we like and wear and all this. This is my crew. This is this is everything that we that we do. And, you know, I could sit there with like billionaires all day and then they start talking about how like they working on a new Circus Soleil act or they doing this, they doing that. And they not seeing me. I like my level of relevancy. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like I'm Michael Jordaning people right now, <laughs> like the level of relevance to what I do in comparison to what anybody else do. So if you're not trying to come close to this, what we doing, you just you just bullshitting yourself. Go ahead now. You know what I'm saying? Like so um and I, even even when we're doing, like, I stay in a room in Chris Jenner's house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'll sit down with Oprah. I'll sit down with, like, heads of studios. I'm not going to mention their names and stuff out of respect or whatever. But, you know, everybody got some advice for me. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't like the way you're going about doing it. And Michael That's Jackson nice never shit. did this. Yeah. And Michael Jackson never. I said, I ain't Michael Jackson. I'm not just a musician. I'm a Christian revolutionary visionary products person. I ain't here to dance for you. I ain't here to do a two-step. Right. That's just a piece. That was just my end. And now I want to create. I want to create content. I mean, eventually, 10 years from now, I want to, I just want to create for the church, period. I'm Christian. I'm just going to die. I'm designed like the new, the new Sistine Chapel. Let's rewind yeah. 10 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Are you, mm -hmm. you got to think you're doing things 10 years yeah. later that if you would have said the same thing 10 years ago, be like, man, no, nah, he can't do that. No, nah, he can't. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, so in 10 years from now, I'm pretty sure. And my thing is, I love how you think out the box. Yeah. Or I remember one time years ago we came in and I remember Fuzzy was like, oh, yeah. And I don't even think we were on air. We were talking about, yeah, Fuzzy was like, oh, yeah, this is Kanye. He's a producer. And I remember you correcting him right then. You was like, man, I'm a rapper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now if somebody were to call you a rapper today, what would you say? Just a visionary. I think it's a skill set of mine. But, you know, like when you... When, when you are first born, you're just you. Mm -hmm. It seems like whatever skill set you gain, then you're boxed into that. 
that might not even be your true calling right to whatever you box in and then people have the right to go and explore other things like people try to say well you can't you're not gonna stop doing music art you don't have the right to tell me when i'm gonna stop start finish anything i'm gonna do what i feel like when i wake up when i think it and that's what i do and i want to go after i'm in a position to do it that's what i'm gonna do you know what i always think about kanye also man even as i'm listening to this and i think about this a lot even with through the wire not knowing what kanye was going to become to go in the studio with your jaw wired and do this record when you start to fast forward kanye or your career it seemed genius you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. going to go in the studio. I'm going to make this record. And now when I listen to it, I'm like, man, that's a dude that knew exactly what he was doing. And yeah. I'm not surprised by it now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only reason why I even sampled that, because what had happened is, like, this, those type of samples that started getting played out to me. So I always want to innovate. I was pushing over to, like, Nina Simone samples with Just to Get By. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. it, a lot of New York rappers are still using the sped-up samples that we were doing on, like, the Dynasty and Blueprint. So only reason why I did it is because I, I was in West um, Westwood, and I walked into, like, a coffee shop, and they were playing, you know, Through the Fire. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, she says wire. Maybe just as a joke, I'm going to go to the studio because I was trying to recover and everything. My face is all swollen up. And uh, and kind of just as a joke, I did that record. And then we put, it allowed me to anchor my story around it. Because uh, Cootie and Chike, who were doing a lot of documentation for me at that time, they had a lot of footage on me. And that's the way we were able to make that video. And then we put it inside the Polaroids, like set it up like creatively and everything. And once people saw that, it's like, it's kind of like they felt that. And I think that, you know, this this period of time where uh, I wasn't able to just get my clothing the way I wanted it, it it allows me to be on the radio and kind of express to y'all what I'm going through so that when I do make these garments and y'all feel them, y'all going to feel that story behind it. Because what happens as soon as someone's famous, you think everything else is easy for them. Mm -hmm. And I've reached a place where, no, it ain't it's not that easy. So it's just as hard for what you your next moves that you're trying to do. We would think like like it's a no brainer. It's got to be easy for Kanye. It makes it even more difficult. It's yeah, as difficult as it is for Oprah or Diddy when they doing a new network, right? And they going up against these other networks. You know, it's like everything is you know difficult as soon as you try to step into another field. Because I was I was eating uh, dinner with uh, uh with Zuckerberg, right? Mm. Uh, and um and Hold I was on, telling pick that up right there. Kanye. Yeah. So then you just drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, I'm writing down a gang and I'm like, man, yeah. I need to start taking some meetings. I know who these people are. But I'll say, so you sit with Zuckerberg. Yeah. And I, I was telling, it's like, yo, you know, it's only seven black billionaires in the world. It's like fourteen. You know, at this point. And like last I checked, it was 1,463 billionaires in the world mm-hmm. and only seven black ones. You do know, just do we put, know any of the... You know one, definitely. Is that Oprah? That's the only one we know. Damn. Damn. <laughs> and Bob, what, Bob Johnson or something, some of the time? Right. <laughs> kind of fluctuate in and out of being a billionaire. But, you know, and perhaps Jay-Z is on his way to becoming one. Mm-hmm. But just, and I, I'm going to be one. I heard and, that. But, and, and it's not even just about the uh about having the money to have the money is having the ability to help mm. have the ability to affect change for real you can't affect change from inside the white house like that you gotta you gotta get out there on the street and really yeah and really and it ain't just me doing a concert you know when something happens you know in the media that's an uproar it's like we're gonna do a concert like no it's money bottom line you gotta have the money and and uh unfortunately right unfortunately for me for donda is good ideas usually aren't connected to money as much and that's why that's why so many bad ideas out there. That's why mm-hmm. so much crap out there. And, you know, right now, creativity and extreme genius is, like, extremely cheap. We, we, we live in more of a Microsoft era and a mentality than an Apple mentality. And my mentality is far more of a Steve Jobs and Apple. So whenever, whenever y'all hear me say, I'm Steve Jobs and I'm that, that, man, don't worry about how I'm saying what I'm saying. <laughs> look, look at what I'm saying and what I feel and what my intent is. Because people get so caught up on, you know. Yeah, he's he, Steve he, Jobs. He, yeah. he, 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 he said that the wrong way. He used all caps. I saw him, media takeout just randomly, you know what I'm saying. Oh. They had something that. Uh, I took a picture before I went on stage, you know, I wear this mask. Mm-hmm. And the caption was, Kanye's such a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? It's like, y'all, man, no weapon formed against Michelle Prophecy. Y'all need to oh. watch y'all talking about, you know what I'm saying? You know, ask for favor and please stay blessed because you do not want to go against the power. 
you know, I, I'm, I'm working on one mission, and that's a mission from God, Amen. period. So, like, all this negative energy that y'all throwing at me and all this confusion that y'all trying to put around me, we going to clearly, I'm going to make it very clear exactly what I'm here to do, and I'm here to help, and I'm going to apply all of the blessings that I've got, all the information, all the creativity that I've got, and I'm going to apply it in a way that I can really help, you know, because it's the information highway. That's where everybody that's controlling from these radio stations that I'm talking on right now to TV stations I'm going on, Y'all need to realize y'all ain't got control no more because the internet is out here. Mm -hmm. That means that a person like an Elon Musk would have been held down at like a GM talking about he wanted to do electric cars, but because he was able to make PayPal and able to get that guap, then he was able to make Tesla. And then he's able to make, meanwhile, Obama talking about a train system, he's able to make the hyperloop and exactly, you know, where we should go moving towards the future. So we we moving towards the future and I'm going to be the anchor, you know. We got Kanye yeah. West in the neighborhood. Y'all stick around. Y'all radios, yeah. man. The man ain't done. Power106.com live stream is going on right now. We got Kanye West in the neighborhood. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Big boys Big neighborhood, boy. y'all. Power106.